The Mass General Hospital is the third oldest hospital in the United States. It's the largest in New England. Uh, it's about a thousand bed hospital, but it also has the largest research program of any hospital in the United States. The Center for Human Genetic Research is a research entity within the Massachusetts General Hospital that's dedicated to the use of genetics as a tool to study disease. The Center for Human Genetic Research has 40 faculty members from many different departments within the hospital, all housed in about 50,000 square feet, all located together using the tools of genetics to attack disease in an interactive, collaborative fashion. We are uh, a resource for the hospital to study all areas of disease, from rare pediatric disorders through to common adult disease that's not normally thought of as genetic. The center is built around a research paradigm that we refer to as the genetic research cycle. The paradigm really says that if you're going to study human disease, you have to study humans as the starting point. And so the first step in the genetic research cycle is to combine information about humans and their disease with their DNA sequence detected as variation between people to identify sequence differences that relate in some way to the disease, either causing it, modifying its expression, or determining its response to treatment. Step two in the cycle is to take that information and try to figure out how the sequence difference leads to the disease. Step three in the cycle is to deliver benefit back to patients by either improved diagnosis based on what we've learned, uh, improved disease management prevention by early diagnosis, uh, and treatment based on a rational attempt to intervene in the mechanism of the disease rather than simply trying to treat the symptoms. The idea of organizing the Center for Human Genetic Research actually came from our work on Huntington's disease, which began more than three decades ago. We have moved around the cycle in HD to the point where we've already improved diagnosis uh, and we're working very hard on trying to develop a therapy that's rational based on the actual mechanism of the disease. Huntington's disease is caused by an expanded stretch of DNA, the sequence CAG, over and over and over again, uh, within a gene on chromosome 4. By understanding what the defect is, and that all individuals with Huntington's disease have the same kind of mutation, but the mutation has a different length in different individuals, we've been able to study the trigger of pathogenesis. Because the repeat length is correlated with the age of onset of the disorder, it means that the rate of pathogenesis is determined by that CAG repeat. The cycle's been completed for Huntington's disease, and we've actually begun to go around the cycle again a second time. So in taking Huntington's disease around the cycle a second time, uh, we're approaching it very much like we did the first time, which is an international collaboration of investigators who've pooled resources to try to maximize the population that can be studied. And as a result of that collaboration, our group, together with groups in Europe uh, and other parts of the United States, have actually managed to identify these modifiers. Unlike Huntington's disease, autism isn't caused by one gene, it's caused by many genes. And so the genetic tools have enabled the discovery of many genes that impact. But most importantly is now going the next step in the cycle, trying to understand how each of those genes work. And we've been able to use the new technologies of generating stem cells from individuals and turning those stem cells into nerve cells and taking them through the steps of making particular neurons to try to compare what happens when the gene is defective or when the gene is present and comparing those genes. Because there are many different genes that contribute to autism and yet the patient manifestations are similar enough to be diagnosed as a disorder, uh, we expect that the consequences of each of those different genetic defects is going to ultimately lead to an overlap with the others that is the final pathway necessary to produce that disorder. Understanding that final pathway will help both with diagnosis and with developing treatments. We've seen great progress in recent years because we've had a much closer partnership between our genetic researchers and patients and families affected by autism. And this has led to really a, a very substantial number of genetic findings in autism that we're still in the early stages of understanding and turning that into the types of biological insights into the causes of autism that we're looking for. But already at an early time point, just the fact that this genetic research is happening and is being successful has greatly impacted the way in which both patients and families and the public in general is viewing autism as a medical 
condition that we can study and understand. My hope really is that genetics will gradually be recognized as a crucial part of patient assessment for all disorders, uh, that individuals will have their genome sequenced in such a way that the knowledge is there to use in advance of them developing disease and that the knowledge can also help us to personalize treatment for those disorders, uh, not, not to treat their disorder, but to prevent them from ever having it. Everyone is incredibly excited about the, the science and in, in a very real way, the field that we're in is sort of like the place to be in research science now, sort of where physics and chemistry were a century ago. This really has a very clear path to improving human health and impacting individual patients and groups of patients in a positive way.